Welcome to Beat Diabetes, where we focus on, you guessed it, beating diabetes and bringing those glucose levels down close to normal. On today's program, we'll talk about why living into old age is not really the goal and why it is that many diabetics do, in fact, make it to old age, but they suffer tremendously and why that does not have to be the case with you. We'll also hear from a man who dropped his A1C from 8.8 to 5.9 in three months. And now he says he feels like his youth has returned. Okay, here's a bit of advice about blood sugar meters, and I'm always into that. This person says, a, flu a few years ago, I got a meter at my local Brookshire's market because my insurance company wouldn't pay for more than one test strip a day because my A1C was below seven. <laughs> he says, I argued with them that, that the way I kept it low was by testing often, but they would not budge. So they're saying, hey, you're not a severe enough diabetic. Your A1C is under seven. We're only going to pay for one strip a day. So he says, I bought the cheap one they sell at Brookshire's. It's called the Glucocard Shine, and it was only one penny. I guess they're wanting to make their money off the strips and not off the actual meter, and I don't know that everyone is like that. Test strips are only $10 for 50. Wow, that's a great price. So the, the meter is like a penny, basically give it away. Test strips are 50 for 10 well, of course, if the thing is all over the place and totally inaccurate, uh, you know, that's not really a bargain. But this person says this, listen, it has proved to be the most accurate meter I've ever had. I regularly test when they're drawing blood at the doctor so I can check for the accuracy. And this meter is never more than a couple of points difference, if any. Wow, wow, wow. Now, sad thing is I know some of you are listening in India and you're not going to be able to go into a Brookshire's and, and buy a Glucocard Shine um, blood sugar meter. And some of you are, are listening to this in various countries where you can't do that. But if you can, do it. If you can't, well, look around, get what you can. Almost any meter is better than no meter. But this, uh, this intrigues me. I've never had this, uh, this Brookshire's, Brookshire's uh, Glucocard Shine meter, and I'm, I'm probably going to head out there sometime and buy me one and give it a try and see how it does. And if it does well, very cool. That's, that's another meter I can use. You know, meters are our tools in trade. You know, a, a plumber has his plumbing tools. A carpenter has his uh, nail gun. And, you know, all the, the various workers have their tools. Well, we <laughs> diabetics, potential diabetics, pre-diabetics, or people that just don't ever want to be a diabetic, uh, our big tool is the little cheap glucose meter and the strips that we can get. And obviously, it helps if it's reasonably priced. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not so wealthy that I can go out and buy, you know, spend a lot of money. And the strips is what really kills you. If I got a really accurate meter and the strips were cheap, I wouldn't mind paying $30, $40 for that meter as long as I knew I could get cheap strips from then on. But if I pay a lot for the meter and the, the strips are expensive as well, that's not so good. Okay, here's a lady who says, thanks for doing these videos. It took me years of trying to figure out what was wrong with me. Often got my blood work done, but always in a fasted state. So I always came back good until I saw your video and I got my own testing kit. And it turns out that any higher carb food raises my blood sugar over 200. And about two hours after eating fruit, my blood sugar stays above 200. So thanks so much. Well, that's really interesting. And I think it's a very powerful point that uh, needs to be made from this lady's story. She's saying, and this is something that I experienced as well. She's saying, every time they did a fasting glucose, they told me, you're fine. The fasting glucose was all right. But she said, you know, I got concerned about my blood sugar. I went out and I got my own kit. I found out I can jump over 200. And let me say that anybody who can jump over 200 eating a meal Unless you're talking about eating a dozen donuts, then I guess maybe you've got a reason. But just eating more or less a normal meal, a high-carb meal, but you know, not going too crazy. If you can jump over 200, you have some metabolic problems for sure. Nobody should be going up that high. 
And even though your fasting glucose may look all right, you know, mine did when I started breaking down. My metabolic system was collapsing. I was jumping too high, dropping too low, having all kinds of problems, shaking and trembling and having to eat every few hours. I was a total mess. Yet when they tested my fasting glucose, Dennis, you're fine. It was under the magical 126 milligrams per deciliter that American doctors look for. Even my A1C was in the close to the normal side, was not diabetic. But I had serious, serious problems. This lady is smart. You want to know what I think, and this is just a guess. I can't prove it, but based on all that I hear and all that I'm learning from being involved with diabetes as heavily as I am, what I would guess is that most, I'm talking about the majority, and I don't mean just 51%. I'm guessing probably upwards of 60% of American adults could jump way too high with a high-carb meal. But one reason they don't know it is they don't test themselves at all. A second reason they don't know it is those who do test have heard this dogma pounded into their head again and again by well-meaning people who are just ignorant Never test except for two hours. Two hours is the magic number. If you're good at two hours, you're fine. Folks, I can eat Cocoa Puffs, and in two hours' time, I'll be uh, in the 120s probably. But if I look at my spike, I hit up to 200, and that's not healthy. That's the problem. A lot of people say, well, as long as you can bring it down in two hours or three hours, as long as it comes down by then, you're good. Don't worry about the spike. I do worry about the spike. Because spikes are unhealthy for you, and spikes are just the easiest way to control your metabolic state and your blood sugar and uh, the chances of you getting diabetes. If you can keep those spikes low, everything else will fall into line. And, you know, I really believe that one reason uh, people rejoice that they've beaten diabetes on a high carb diet and and I hear that occasionally you know especially from the vegans and whole food uh, plant based people that'll never eat meat and they'll say well you know I went uh, I, I I eat a high carb diet I eat lots of potatoes lots of rice but you know my A1C is pretty good it may be it may be but you may be spiking tremendously and you don't realize that. And that up and down, up and down, spiking kind of a lifestyle, spike for breakfast, spike for lunch, spike for supper, have a snack in the evening, spike again. That is not healthy, my friend. It is not a good thing. And we need to control those spikes. All right. This is from a woman who said, uh, my late mother's favorite breakfast was a powdered jelly donut and a cup of hot chocolate. Oh, could you get much worse than that? Well, I guess you could, but that's just about as bad as it gets. A powdered jelly donut and a cup of hot chocolate. That was her standard breakfast. Years ago, she says, my mother went for a blood sugar test shortly after eating her powdered jelly donut and her drinking her hot chocolate. Her blood sugar was 400. They tried to put her in the hospital, but somehow she talked them out of it. She lived with diabetes and many related health issues for another 32 years. She took a lot of medication and suffered much, passing away in 2017. I miss her terribly, and I wish she could have followed your advice. Well, you know, you have to give her kudos. She, you know, living like this, and, and the daughter doesn't say, but I'm guessing she didn't really change her ways too much. And she managed to live another 32 years, so she probably lived to be an older woman. But she says she suffered a lot. And uh, my mom was the same thing. You know, my mom was a diabetic for probably about the last 30 years of her life. Uh, and she lived to be 80. So you might say, well, she lived to be a fairly old, to be, uh, you know, fairly old, lived to a fairly ripe old age. She didn't do bad for being a diabetic. Yeah, but she was having procedures constantly, almost every year, another procedure, another angiogram, uh, another stent put in. Finally, they cut off one leg, then they cut off another leg. She had a couple of strokes, heart attacks, in and out of the hospital the last 16 years of her life. Yes, she did make it to 80, but they were not quality years for about the la those last 16 years. 
And the goal is not just to live to be 80. You know, there are diabetics that uh, we've got one here. This, in fact, this next comment, my grandma was type 2, lived to be 100. So it's not a guarantee that you're going to die early. You know, we would be in error. We would be deceiving if we said, oh, you're a type 2. You'll never make it past 60. <laughs> There's lots of diabetics make it past 60. Uh, but what is likely is that your quality of life will erode. And if you could compare the you as a diabetic to the you if you were not diabetic and you controlled your blood sugar and your A1C was normal, your fasting glucose was normal, and you ate low carb, uh, the quality of life normally would be vastly different. So, you know, it, it's up to all of us. We have to decide. But yeah, you can live to be old as a diabetic, but pretty good chance you'll suffer and you may end up on dialysis. Uh, with a, a totally blown out kidney, uh, you you may end up going blind, uh, all kinds of problems that can happen and, and likely will. Uh, the truth is your body was simply never made to ingest carbs and especially the junk carbs that we normally eat these days. Your body just wasn't made. You're abusing your body. And of course, you know, it's going to rebel. It's like driving a car and saying, well, I don't need to change the oil. That My car drives just fine. I've been driving it for three good years now. I've never changed the oil once with a big smile on your face. You see how clever I am? I drive my, year, my car three years and don't ever change the oil. You drive your car and every three months you're going and changing your oil. You silly boy, don't you see how clever I am? No, my friend, you're not clever. Your car is going to break down. Your car is going to mess up. You may get away with it for three years, but you won't get away with it forever. And most likely, uh, most diabetics are not going to get away with forever uh, with it forever. There may be a few freaks of nature that just somehow can eat lousy and have high glucose and still live a fairly healthy life without too many complications. You know, I'm not going to say that it's impossible that that could happen. I'm just going to say it's not likely. All right. Here's an individual who says, three months ago, my fasting blood sugar was 188. My A1C was 8.8. .8. Definitely, there are higher numbers than that that people get, but 8.8 .8 is not good. I was tired and draggy all day. Three months later, three months later, my A1C is 5.9. So he's dropped it almost three full points. My fasting blood sugar was 99 this morning. I'm 17 pounds lighter, and at 58, I feel like some of my youth has returned. Hallelujah for that. And much of it is because of your help, Dennis. Thank you so much. Well, it's just such a liberating feeling when you get control of your health. It's There's just nothing like it. You know, when my health was breaking down, I felt horrible, and it was about all I could think about. I just was wondering what's going to happen to me. And I was in my 50s at the time, early 50s. So I'm like, if I'm this bad in my 50s, what in the world will I be like in my 60s or 70s? In fact, I, I, it actually started in my 40s and then it kind of eased off for a while and then it came back. But uh, it, was, uh, it was bad news. So anyway, you know, one illustration I could give is uh, – like a, a, a marathon race where everybody's got a backpack uh, on their backs. And some people, you know, they all start out empty. But as they run, there's little uh, evil people that sneak up on the runners while they're not aware of it and drop things in their backpack. But they're smart enough to know that they're not going to drop it all at once. So even though they may give you enough weight that would equal a bowling ball, they'll do it in small increments. So, you know, you're at mile one and they drop in a little weight. And you're at mile two, they sneak up and get, drop in another. After a while, you're weighed down with about 50 or 60 pounds in your backpack. But it's because it's been coming on gradually, you don't think about it so much. All you know is you're worn out. You have no energy. You don't think you can finish the race. You're miserable. But how did you get this way and what's the cause? You don't know. And some friend comes along and says, you've got a lot of weight in that backpack, don't you? And you look back there and man, and then you stop, you take off the backpack, you dump out all the weights and the rocks that are in there. You put the backpack back on, it's empty again. You feel great and you're ready to run and you know you can finish the race. Well, that's kind of how it is. You know, when you get diabetes, the weight starts adding on and you get less energy 
you your health breaks down, your eyes go bad, all kinds of things start to happen. Your organs start to fail, your kidneys start to fail. Uh, the weight gets heavier and heavier. You feel sluggish. You you just feel like you can't do much. You're you're constantly obsessed with your health, and you don't know what you can do about it. And your doctor's telling you your 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 uh, lipids are not good. This is not good. Your your uh, triglycerides are terrible. Uh, your blood pressure is way too high. Your blood sugar is way too high. This is not good. This is not good. And you're depressed. You're scared. But you're so paralyzed. You hardly know what to do. And, you know, what this channel is telling you and so many other doctors are saying is take out all those weights and rocks that are in your backpack. In other words, cut out that high carb eating and start living like you are made to live, which is on a low carb diet, eating lots of vegetables and some meat, and a high fat diet. You'll be amazed how much better you feel. This guy says, man, I feel uh, I feel so much better. Feel like my youth has returned. Well, that is wonderful, and he's just thrilled. He's he's broken broken one hundred. What a neat feeling when you've been with fasting glucose in the three hundreds and two hundreds, and you're fighting it every day to try to get it down, and suddenly it starts working. And one day you get up and you test yourself, and it reads ninety nine or ninety eight or ninety five. There's just nothing like it. It's just absolutely wonderful. All right. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this. If so, give it a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe if you haven't yet done that and click that bell icon so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. God bless. See you again soon.